Welcome back, everybody. I'm going to help you with some projectile calculation stuff again. Uh, today we're looking at how do we figure out how far something will go if we know its angle and how fast it was moving. So we have here, um, in a circus sometimes you'll see this, uh, somebody's shot out of a cannon. So here we have a clown, and this clown wants to survive being shot out of the cannon, and so they have a safety net, okay? And the safety net, we need to figure out where that should go. Well, that all depends on how fast the clown is fired out of the cannon and the angle that they're fired at. So um, our question here when we look at this is calculate, that's your question or your command word, how far away? Well, what type of thing are we looking for there? We are looking for a D, a distance. So how far away should a safety net be if the cannon is launched, or I'm sorry, the clown is launched at a 30 degree angle with a velocity of 25 meters per second? So how do we do that? Well, first we start by drawing our picture, okay? So we have, I'm just gonna simplify things. Here's our clown. I'm just gonna use a dot. That makes it as simple as possible. And then I want to think about, okay, let's say this clown was at the origin of an X and a Y graph. Okay. Where would 30 degrees be there? Would that be closer to the X axis or would that be closer to the Y axis? Well, you think of 30 degrees, right? Here's zero. Straight up and down is 90. Well, 30 is going to be closer to zero closer to the x so i'm going to draw a line that's closer to the x about a third of the way and just going to make it an arrow okay and the length of that arrow is simply the velocity so 25 meters per second and again physics folks and scientists realize hey <clears throat> i could make this into a triangle where i draw a line straight down from where that arrow ends and I draw a line straight from the origin all the way to where that hits, and now I have a right triangle. And if I have a right triangle where I know that this is my 30 degree angle, and I know that the velocity is 25 meters per second, I can use SOHCAHTOA now to figure out how much of that speed is up and down, which we call VY, and how much of that speed is side to side, which we call VX. So keep in mind, this is the actual velocity of the clown, right? But some of that direction, because it's at an angle, is up, and some of that speed is sideways. <clears throat> so and you can actually kind of look at our triangle here and say most of the speed must actually be in the side-to-side -side direction because the side-to-side -side length of our triangle is actually bigger. So the question is, is how far away? Now, to do this, <clears throat> we want to create our X and our Y chart, okay? And we want to figure out what numbers are going to go as an X number and what numbers are going to go in a Y number. I'm going to continue my picture here so we know that the clown is launched. So here's the ground, right? And we know that the clown is launched. It's going to create a parabola or an arc, okay? And we know that the clown's going to land somewhere. Well, the question is, is where should our safety net be? Okay. And that from here to here is our distance. And it's called a DX or a range. Okay. Now, what do we know? Move this up here a little bit so I can write some more stuff. What do we know? Well, we know that we can use SOHCAHTOA to figure out this VX and this VY. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, I know this is the opposite side of the angle, and this side is the adjacent side. And again, if you don't remember why that is, please go back and look at the videos I have for how to do sine and cosine all that stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna do this up here. Sine of my angle is related to opposite. So, so S O H, sine of 30 degrees is equal to 
my Vy, the opposite side, divided by the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is that speed that the clown was shot out, 25 meters per second. And then for the adjacent, that's going to be cosine. So cosine of 30 degrees equals Vx over the 25 meters per second. So grab my calculator, make sure it's in degrees mode. We don't want radians for this one. 25 times sine of 30 is my first calculation. And I get that the Vy is 12.5 meters per second. So that's velocity in the up and down direction. Well, where is that? That's actually right at the beginning. Okay, do the same thing for the Vx. I have 25 times cosine of 30, and that gives me a Vx of 21.65 meters per second. Well, where is that? That's also right at the beginning here. It's just telling us of this speed right here, how much of that speed of the clown is actually moving in sideways and how much of that speed is moving the clown upward. Okay, that's where we're going. Now, that is our V1 for our X and our Y chart. Our V1 for X is gonna be 21.65 meters per second. Our V1 for Y is going to be 12.5 meters per second. And I'm going to put a plus next to the V1 for Y because, remember, up is positive and a down is negative. And that's really important on projectiles because we do have up and down stuff. Okay. Now, what else do we know? Start writing those things in. We always know what the acceleration is in the X direction. Because we pretend there's no air resistance, there is nothing, no forces that are slowing down the clown in the side-to-side -side direction. If there's no force, there's no acceleration because force equals mass times acceleration, okay? So force of zero means an acceleration of zero in the x direction. In the y direction, however, we know we have gravity, okay? And gravity is a force, and it does cause an acceleration. Remember that number for gravity for acceleration, that magic number is negative 9.8 meters per second. And that is squared. Okay? Ooh, I'm sorry, you can't see that. <laughs> so, what else do we know? Let me move this over here so it's out of the way. What else do we know? We know some stuff about the peak, and we know some stuff about the end. Well, which of those applies to this situation? Well, just for argument's sake, I'm going to put everything here. So at the peak, we know two things. We know because in the side-to-side -side direction, in the x, we know that because there is no acceleration, the velocity for the x is the same everywhere. Acceleration means change of velocity, and there is no change. So we know that the Vx at the peak is also our original 21.65. So I'm going to put velocity at the peak, 21.65, and again, that's meters per second. And we know the Vy at the peak is zero, because whenever you get to the peak, that's the highest point it's going to reach, it starts falling back down. The reason that's the highest point is because gravity is pulling it down. So it was slowing down, up, 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 getting slower, getting slower, getting slower, pauses for a second, down, 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 down. So we know the velocity at the peak for the Y is zero meters per second. Okay. We also know at the end where the clown lands. Okay. We know the VX because X in, or the acceleration in the x direction is zero. We know the vx is still 21.65. Remember for the vy though, gravity has just as much pull bringing it up as it did coming down. And that all depends on how much distance gravity can pull it with. And it has the same amount of distance going up as it does coming down, which means the speed change that gravity causes should be the same, but in the opposite direction. So if we went from 12.5 to zero to get to the peak, going from the peak to the end is gonna be the same change, but now we're going downward, and so it's gonna be a negative. So we're gonna go from zero 
our vy at the end is going to be a negative and the same speed as it was at the beginning, but now it's downward. So negative 12.5. Okay, so I'm going to put that both of those here at the end too. So I'm going to just call it v of landing equals 21.65, and v of landing for the x is a negative 12.5. Again, those are both meters per second. Okay, now, which of those spots does this question talk about? This question is asking, how far away should the net be? So we're talking about this area here, which means we can ignore the peak for this one. Okay, so we're trying to find a distance, right? So we look at our equation sheet and we say, okay, what equation has distance in it? And a lot of our moment or momentum, a lot of our projectile questions are actually going to come down to this equation here. This equation is extremely useful. It allows you to calculate a lot of different things. Okay. And this is no exception to that. So that distance equals V1 times T plus one half AT squared. Except in this case, we're looking for the X distance. So to do this, we can only use X numbers. And that's very important for you to realize. Okay, so I start plugging my numbers in. I know the V1 for my X. I look at my chart. V1 right here, 21.65. That's meters over seconds. Multiply by time. Look at my numbers. Look at my chart. Look at my picture. I don't have a T. So right now that's an unknown. Plus one half times A. Look at my chart again. I have to use the X. I can only use X numbers here. My acceleration in the X direction is a big fat zero. Multiply it, and I still don't have time, so that's time squared. Now, this looks really complicated, but if you look at this carefully, this whole piece right here is going to cancel away because anything times zero is going to give you zero. So that really simplifies it. The problem we have is we still don't have a T. So, how do I find t? Well, general rule of thumb. <clears throat> if you're trying to use x numbers to solve for your problem, a lot of times you have to use the other numbers to find your time. So let's look at this. What do we know? We have a v1, we have an a, and either of these could be used as a v2. Now go back and look at your equation sheet. What equation has a V1, it has an A, it has a V2, and it also has a T. We're looking for the T, and we have those other three. Do that real quick. Pause the video, figure out which one we have. You'll find two of them. Okay? We have two equations that are going to find T for us. We could do the original equation of acceleration equals v2 minus v1 over t, or we could do v2 equals v1 plus a times t. Now, either one of those is actually going to work for you, okay? In fact, both of them. I actually think this bottom one is a little bit easier, so that's the one I'm going to use here. Okay, so I'm going to do that right here. v2, what is my v2? It is right where it lands. Now here, we're going to use y numbers because we have all three of those for y. And that will help us find time. And remember, we can use time on both sides of our chart because time has no direction. Okay, all of these other numbers are talking about 12.5 meters up per second up. 9.8, negative 9.8 meters per second means down, pulling down. This one is 21.65 sideways. Time doesn't have a direction, okay? It's just, here's how long it takes for the clown before they land, okay? That's what we're looking for here. So, V2 is right here, negative 12.5. Equals my V1. What is my V1? Right here. I'm sorry. I almost did it. V1, I have to use a Y number. Positive 12.5. 
Be really careful with your math here. Plus, what is my a in the y direction? It has to be that negative 9.8. That's meters per second squared multiplied by t. Okay, now, order of operations, very important, PEMDAS. Order of operations says normally we'd have to do multiplying first. Unfortunately for us, multiplying has our unknown in it. So then we kind of have to skip that, and we got to do the other stuff. So I need to get all of these other numbers away from t. Well, this is 12.5 plus. So in order to get that to the other side, I have to minus 12.5 on both sides, which means, be careful, these 12.5s, crosses out the 12.5 meters per second on this side, it does not cross it out here. It's negative 12.5 minus 12.5, right? So what we have is a negative 12.5 minus 12.5. Type it into your calculator, just like I'm doing. You get this right here. You get a negative 25 equals a negative 9.8 times t. Now, how do I solve for t? Simple. Divide both sides by negative 9.8. Okay, so for my time, I'm going to take negative 25 divided by negative 9.8, and when I saw that, I get 2.55. Now, what is that number? Is that my final answer? Heck no. That is how much time it takes for the clown to fly through the air and then to land. Where am I going to use that? That goes right there. Okay, I'm going to do that. Let's go up here with this. So my dx is going to equal 21.65 meters per second. Okay times my 2.55 seconds. Okay, type in your calculator. 2.55 times 21.65 equals 55, I'm gonna round it two dozen places, 0.21. Now what are gonna happen to the units? I have a seconds on the bottom here. I have a seconds on the bottom here. Those are going to cancel out. Notice I just have meters left over. And that should make sense because meters is a distance. Okay, so a lot of work here, but you can do this. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. And this is how you figure out the range of a projectile launch.